may think something is wrong with them mentally, but they could have a spirit that causes them to be unclean spirit. It causes them not to want to be clean physically, although it's a dirty spirit internally. Y'all got to understand that. Sometimes you can have a spirit that's going on the inside, and it causes you to do stuff on the outside. So this is called an unclean spirit. Y'all should read that. Yeah. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Uh-huh. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Mm-hmm. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. All right. Now, let, let me, I do want to say this as well, because when we deal with unclean spirits, a lot of, you know, oppression, right, when people are oppressed, it turns into depression, right? And a lot of times that gives that opening for spirits. Just think about most case scenarios. Somebody get real depressed or they o- oppression is more so the thing that causes a person to become depressed. And when they get to that depressed state, a lot of times they don't want to leave where they are. So they'll stay balled up in a place, you know, and they don't like to, it, it, sometimes it gets to a place where they don't, they, don't, they don't eat no more, they don't clean themselves anymore. So it, it opens that individual up to or allow them to be susceptible to different spirits, demonic spirits. This is why you got to be careful. So that's why it's important that, you know, people get the necessary counsel that they need when they're in a depressed state or when things are going on and it, and it, and it pre- you know, see, depressing is just what it's saying. It's, it's pressing you down. So you got to depress. So it's something that's pushing you down. It's such a weight or a heaviness that puts you down. In most case scenario, when a person is down, they're more susceptible to allowing demonic activity to come in because they're at their low place. Everybody understand that? All right, read on. And they that fed the swine fled uh-huh. and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was, was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. So now, listen to this. So it said that he was sitting and clothed and in his right mind. So now, this is an indication that people that some uh, issues that seem like is happening in their mind, it come from demonic activity. So now, the Bible says when they saw him again, people start seeing him. They say, oh man, he in his right mind? Because at first he's hanging out in the graveyard, he's hanging out in the cemetery. That's not, you know, that's not normal. Then, then he's cutting himself. He's not, you know, he's not bathing. You know, he don't have any clothes on. He's just outside running around. So he said, man, something wrong with this fellow mine. So now a lot of that stuff, dude, and this is why it's very important. When a person gets delivered from a demon or having demonic activity, it's very important and vital that they get the proper counsel that they need. Because if not, that mind, see, see, see when it comes down to your mind, you know, this is, you're talking about a mind is a terrible thing to, to, to waste or to lose, but when demonic uh, activity happens, a person's mind gets messed up. So now I have to refuel your thought process. You got to get learn how to think over, think what, what to think about yourself and get you out of that position. Everybody understand what I'm saying? All right, read huh? And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed, 16, and they that saw it told them how it befell him fell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath compassion on thee. All right, now I want you to go to the ninth chapter. Now you have a young man that was the, some, a man that was dealing with something since he was a child. So you go to, to the ninth chapter and start at verse number seventeen. Um. And one of the multitude answered and said unto thee, my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him. So now we have an unclean spirit 
Now, this spirit is called a dumb spirit. All right, read on. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth. So when he said that he teareth him, that means that he's basically just falling out. And start foaming at his mouth and, you know, biting that stuff and, you know, just unseeming, uh, unseeming behavior. Uh -huh, read. And pineth away. Uh -huh. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foamy. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. Now listen to his behavior as he was a child. Now listen to his behaviors, uh huh. And all times it has cast him into the fire. Not the child casting himself into the fire, but it's talking about the spirit in him making him jump in the fire. Uh -huh. And into the waters to destroy him. Mm -hmm. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Uh -huh. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying now, unto him. It was a dumb spirit, but also called a foul spirit. All right? So we got different names for these types of spirits. All right? Read on. Uh -huh. Thou dumb and deaf spirit. All right? Now we got a deaf spirit. All right? Read on. Uh -huh. I charge thee, come out of him. And enter no more into him. Uh -huh. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. So now when demonic, so now I don't know if anybody have ever seen a person being delivered from a spirit. But most cases when you're casting the devil out of somebody, it's an eviction. So now what they're doing is they're screaming out, yelling. And, you know, I, I've dealt with several demon cases. And as we pray and to cast the devil out of somebody, what they start doing is yelling out, screaming out. And, you know, basically fighting because they don't want to lose their home, if you will. All right, read on. And he was one dead, and so much that many said, he is dead. So after he got released from that spirit, he dropped like he was dead. Uh -huh, read. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come this forth. This kind. So now, uh, although we've heard this thing was dumb, foul, deaf, it's kinds of spirits. And see, a lot of times people can't get delivered because they think that every spirit is the same. Every spirit that a person have or any type of demonic possession is not the same. Everything's not the same. And then, you know, see... Church people, they classify it as everything is being the same. Oh, that's just a devil. Well, what kind of devil is it? Because some devils you come in from certain music. Certain devils come in from different types of things. And so when people uh, view demonic activity, they're like, oh, that's just a devil. But we got, you know, the Bible got, it says kinds. So now this kind come out by, uh -huh. by fast, by prayer. By and prayer fasting. and fasting. So now a person dealing with it, that's why you don't see a lot of, uh, uh, casting out of devils in churches because ain't nobody fasting and praying. So nobody don't have, because certain spirits, now you got some spirits you can, you know, you can cast out because they recognize, recognize the name of Jesus because demons, they, they, they tremble and they, they're cast out by the name because it's the name that carry the power. But then you got some devils that's in there, they hear the name, but because you haven't been fasting and praying, they ain't, go, they ain't, they ain't paying no attention to you. You have one one, one, one scripture, uh, leap, leap, stay right there. I want you to get back there, but I want you to go to Acts uh, chapter 19. Uh, start at 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the, unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Uh -huh. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, 
We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? So now the devils recognize where you at in God. You down there trying to cast out devils and trying to rebuke the devil out of somebody. They say, well, I, 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 know, I know about Paul, I know about Jesus, but, but who are you? You trying to cast out the devil in me, but who are you? You haven't even been in the presence of God. How do I know? You? I'm not going to respond to you. So now you got you got seven, eight people trying to deal with the devil, and he said, I don't know what y'all doing. Y'all can't really handle me because y'all ain't got no power. Read, watch this, huh? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and the evil spirit was leaped on them uh -huh. and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. So that one man versus eight men, he whipped them and they left out. Now, these are Jews and so-called exorcists. And uh, go back. Let me show you the eight titles here. Go to the 13th verse again. Uh, uh, 14. Uh, and there were seven sons, one of Sceva, a, a Jew, Jew uh -huh. and chief of the priests, which did so. So now these preachers. They're chief of the priests, and, and they can't even deal with a spirit. They can't deal with a, a devil because they don't understand. Wow. And this goes ties back into my message from Sunday, having a prayer life. And that's why a lot of people, you'll see demons, you know, come and they, you know, manifest. A lot of people don't like to deal with it because they're scared because they know they haven't been praying. No, they ain't got no relationship with God. So they see a devil coming. Somebody called me today. I was supposed to, well, tomorrow I'm supposed to go help and cast out a devil out of somebody tomorrow. But uh, I needed some help, but I, I got to find out who to call and come with me. Because <laughs> we're going we to need some help. <laughs> he got, he got, I got to talk to him on the phone. He, he got a lot going on there. He got quite a few things going on in there. But if you, if you, <laughs> if you don't have the right folks to be able to assist in the uh, 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 casting out of the devil, because, you know, folk get a little, they get squirmy, if you will. When you catch the devil out of them, they start doing this. They be levitating, doing all this and all that. Need somebody to be able to hold them. And we get that. Now, and let me tell you something about the devil and people. Sometimes people get comfortable with the devil in them to where they don't want to be delivered. And you could be, that, that's why I asked him. When I got on that phone, I said, I said, brother, do you want to be delivered? He said, yes, yes. The Catholic Church is supposed to be doing an exorcism on me and this, that, and third, and blah, blah. I said, well, <laughs> but the, the sister said, no, the, that, them folk ain't got no power, you, no passport. We need you to come. We, we need you to come pray for them. But I said, I'm not going to waste my time if you don't want to be delivered. Because guess what? I can go down there and pray for a person to cast the devil out of them. But if they don't want that devil to leave that house, he's going to stay right in there. And then, at some cases, even if I do cast the devil out of you, and you don't want to be delivered, you'll go right back into it. Now you got more devils than you started with. Yeah. Bible says that if uh, a, 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 a house is swept, and the devil was in somebody, and the house is queen is swept, he's coming back with seven other spirits to hang out in your home, yeah. which is your body. Your body is a house. Get the book of 2 Corinthians 5. Let me explain this real quick, and I've said this before, but I want to say it again. The reason why demonic spirits or devils, if you will, want to be in your body and everybody else's body is because they lost their privileges to be inside of a body. Because every devil or every demonic spirit was an angel, all of them. They used to be angels, and because they lost their angelic uh, 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 being or their selves because of the nature that they took on and the behavior that they've done, they lost bodies. So now, in order for me to be seen, I got to try to, I got to camp in yours. I want to take over your body. Because that would be my house. That's what the fellow said down there. He said, I, I want to get my house. All right, read, huh? Father one. For we know that if our earthly house, if our what? Earthly house. Earthly house. So what you look at in the mirror is not you. That's just a house that your soul live in. And the Bible says to, to uh, 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 in Genesis, he said, and man became a living what? Soul. He became a soul. But when man sinned, that's when the body skin came on. Go back to Genesis. Let me show you this. Genesis chapter 2 and 6. Then I want Genesis chapter 3 and 22, I believe it is. All right? Let me show you this real quick. 
All right, Genesis 2 and 6, and then went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole, the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we are living souls, and our living souls lives in this house that we look at every day, that we take, we take care of this right here. But my question is, what you taking care of that's on the inside? Because when you die, this ain't going with you. Amen. Amen. This little body, this little skin that you take care of, that you wash every day and do all, you know, have your face looking good, all that stuff, that stuff, it ain't going with you. So if you're taking care of that external, I sure hope you're taking care of that soul. I hope you're feeding that soul right. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. All right, read. Uh -huh. I'll go to, what would I say, three? And 20, what would I say, 22? 21, that's what I want. Uh-huh. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So now skin comes in the picture, and it covers the soul. So now the soul is inside of the skin. So this is why you can close your mouth and still talk. You can say stuff about folk, and they can't hear you, because it's the soul that's talking. Everybody understand that? All right? So now this is why demons want a house. Go back to that 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. They want a little house to live in because they're a spirit and they can't be seen. All right, read. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, uh -huh. we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Uh -huh. For in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. But we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. So not now spirits, <laughs> spirits are naked. That's why they want to, they can't, they can't be seen in their nakedness. So the only way that they can be seen is inside of a body. So now in order for me to be seen, I got to go grab somebody's body. So now I want to entice you and lower you in so that I can get inside of your body. So this is why there's so much things out there that attracts our, uh, listen, your, your, your mind and your mental state, your soul, all those different things like that, or your, or your flesh, your fleshly desires, everything comes from the eyes, everything you see. And a lot of things we do, we sit and waste a lot of time feeding our soul with this. Our soul got a lot of this in there. We, got, we know everybody's business from Facebook, Instagram. We know every, all of that stuff, and it'd be a lot of information that we downloading. Y'all all right? I know I'm talking right. All that stuff we're downloading in our spirit, but how are we taking care of, and, 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 and we're, we're opening ourselves to spirits. So you don't know that, and y'all, I know a lot of y'all don't know, but the intent for phones and different things like that is to suck you in so that you get have spirits. Okay, let me give you some Bible. Now, now let, me, let me explain to you. First of all, when it comes down to the kingdoms of this world, it don't belong to Jesus. Oh my God. All right, give me Luke chapter 4. Let me help y'all get some reading in. All right. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 5. There are principalities in this world there's a lot of rulers in this world and there is a God of the world and the God of the world is not the big G it's the little G alright let me give you some Bible read uh huh and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All the kingdoms of the world. Now, this is the devil giving these images to Jesus in his mind, said, I will give you the kingdoms of the world. Now, read. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. All this power will I give thee. Uh -huh. And the glory of them. And the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, uh -huh. and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So wait a minute. The Bible says that the world and the power of the world was delivered to Satan. Well, when did he get this special delivery? He got this special delivery back there in Genesis. When he convinced God's folk 
to eat and disobey God. That's when Adam lost his power. Remember, God gave Adam power and dominion over everything. And then when he ate of the tree, once he sinned, he done delivered that over to Satan. So now Satan is saying, for that is delivered unto me. Read, and to whomsoever I will give it. So now what the Bible is letting us know that when he was talking to him, this is an indication that the kingdoms of the world did not belong to Jesus. Satan had them. All right, I'm going to give you some more. But go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 4. Start at three. But of our gospel, but if, if our gospel, but if our gospel be hid, uh -huh. it is hid to them that are lost. Now, he said, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them lost. There's people that don't have the gospel, and it's hid to them that are lost. How are they lost? Uh huh. In whom the God of this in world, in whom the what? The God. Wait, so there's a God of the world. And that's not a big G, but that's the little G. He's talking about Satan. He's the God of the world. This is why a lot of these people that get in these higher positions, they're full of the devil. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. They make rules and regulations that go strictly against the Bible. You think, that, you think that's God? Of course not. Then, on the back of your dollar, they say, in God we trust. They're not talking about the Lord Jesus. The God of the world. Oh God, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. So there is a God of the world that controls the systems of the world. Uh, read. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Uh -huh. Lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So he's saying that you got people's mind that's blinded. And a lot of what blinds people's minds is information that we get here. A lot of the stuff we look at, they, look, a lot of people be so, you know, they be so uh, 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 glued in to some of the fake news that they be putting on Facebook and all that stuff. You miss out what really, what's really happening. People get caught up in different social medias. Uh, and I, I'm not saying that social, I want to tell you that. They say, well, I went to that church. They said social media is the devil. <laughs> what I am saying is that spirits operate through that stuff. I was told, I didn't know that uh, Twitter, I've been off Twitter for probably 10 years, but I heard that Twitter is, 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 is like a, 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 a dealt war website now. I heard Twitter is, 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 is bad. So who are the influencers of these platforms? A lot of times we see that stuff and get glued in and those things that's going on and start sitting in our spirit, then we find out why we're doing or imitating or emulating what we saw. Amen. All right. Whom the God of this world uh -huh, have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. So if they don't understand the image of God, and, and this is another reason, and, and, and this is another uh, 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 thought, a lot of times people's minds are blocked, and Satan is blocking people's mind from understanding the oneness of God. Lest the light of this, the, the, the glorious gospel of Christ, who is? Christ is the image of God, should shine unto them. So now this breaks people from these devices that Satan tried to use to keep you bound. Let me tell you all something. There's not a fight. You know, most case scenario, people think about church, they think about God. They believe that there's a war going on, Jesus versus, Jesus versus the devil. That ain't no war. The devil, already he already got his destination. There ain't no battle talking about Jesus, oh, Jesus and, devil, and the devil fighting again. No, 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 Jesus ain't fighting no devil. He already won. He done told him, hey, hey, look, you got, you, got, you got a little bit of time. You got a short time, short period of time to do what you want to do. And then you have a specific destination. He already got his destiny. There ain't no fight going on. I, I can't believe people believe that. Oh, yeah, Jesus and the devil. They up there fighting. Jesus, the, the devil ain't fighting Jesus. He got to come and ask permission to do certain things. And then the devil be accusing everybody. Come to jail. Oh, uh, you know, he done did it again. You, gonna, you ain't going to kill him. You ain't going to take him out. He did it again. He get out and get permission. 
I got to start reading your Bibles. Go down there to Job. There ain't no war going on. Jesus ain't fighting no devil. He trying to fight you and me. That's what, he, that's what he's trying to fight. He, he can't win no battle against God, but you if you get to fight and see, this is why the importance of what I'm teaching tonight deals everything with your mind. You got to learn how to protect your mind. When you don't protect your mind, you allow the, the devil to infiltrate your system up here, and it'll send you a different place. Send you on a wild goose chase. All right, read, uh-huh. I got you. Job chapter 1. Verse number six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man? one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Though Job fear God for naught, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So now Satan, you know, Satan got instruction from God of what he can and cannot do. So there's no war going on, Jesus versus the devil. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't what's going on. Now the devil versus you, he, yeah, he, he'll fight you now. He's looking to beat you up. And depending upon how open your spirit is, he'll wear you out. Amen. All right. Where had you before that? Uh, give me, John, give me, go, go to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4. This scripture is important because it shows how you can eliminate Satan's presence of fighting. and Take his hand because he'll try you. Four and uh, one, I'll uh, read. Then was Jesus led up the up of the spirit into the wilderness uh -huh. to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Uh -huh. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, how, how did Jesus have the ability to withstand or to hold fast. What was he doing? He was fasting. Because he was fasting, he had the ability to hold on. They say, now, Jesus was in, now we're talking about God was in a flesh body. He's in the flesh. He just, he didn't eat for 40 days. You don't think he wanted to eat some bread? Absolutely he did. He was hungry. The Bible said, no. <laughs> read, read that for Read it again. <laughs> Read four, 4 and 2 again. Is it 4 1 4 and 2? And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. He was hungry. <laughs> he wanted something to eat. <laughs> Some of y'all miss y'all breakfast. Y'all be starving. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> Talking about not eating for 40 days. He was fasting. Did not eat for 40 days. 40 days. But he had the ability to withstand because fasting puts you in a different place with God. I'm going to show you this. Go to Exodus chapter 32. Uh, Exodus chapter 34, I'm sorry. 34 and 27. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the ten tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Keep reading. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread, nor drank water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, 
that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. So now we, we see that his whole countenance changed because he was fasting. So people have a recognition now. If you can look at me and tell that I've been with God, what do you think spirits could see? So that's how they recognize. And so there is a certain type of spirit or a certain type of demon that a people deal with, and you can't get it out of a person unless you've been in fasting and praying. That's why it's important not just to have a prayer life, but to have a fasting life. You should be at least you should at least try to have to fast at least one day out of the week. And everybody said nothing. <laughs> they said, Pastor, I don't know if I can handle that, my little stomach. You should be able to fast at least one day out of the week. And then, you know, have that. And then as it gradually get to like two, two days out of the week to where you can fast and get in the presence of God, not feeding your flesh. Not feeding, you know, so fasting, you could, that means, you know, cutting off social media for a day. I don't want to do that. <laughs> they don't want to do that. They don't want I don't want to cut that social media out. Cut that social media out. Turn your plate down. Get in the place of you know. See, when they used to fast back in the day, they wasn't out working and all that stuff like we do. When people was fasting it, it back in the day, they wasn't out uh, 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 because you know. And, and if they did have to go out, which was very rare, the Bible said, "Now you go out there, make sure you wash your face, and don't be looking like you just you know so pitiful because you just been fasting." That's what the Bible said. They was fasting. Back in Isaiah and all the different times on that, and, and while he was fasting, the Bible said, if you did go out there, make sure you wash your face and don't be looking like you've been in a fasting place. Everybody follow me? Uh, because, listen, I'm telling you something. You get stronger when you fast. You get stronger spiritually. We're talking about just praying. I'm coming to you. We're talking about just praying, but when you're praying and fasting. See, the Bible say, it didn't just say that these demons come out by just praying. It said prayer and fasting together because prayer is different from fasting. Fasting is prayer, different from prayer. Now, if you're just fasting without praying, then we're still missing this thing. So I said, I need both of them. I need prayer and fasting. Ah, God, somebody shout hallelujah. I know I've been teaching on prayer Sunday morning. I sure hope some of y'all have changed y'all prayer life. Anybody changed their prayer this week? Did a little better? Amen. Don't lie there now. <laughs> 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 All right, yes, ma'am, you got a question? Do you have to um, use oil when you fast? Now, the Bible did say, you know, in, in certain aspects, now, it's not a mandatory thing, but it is a wisdom thing because now you, you do have in the, um, in, the, uh, 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 in the Old Testament, they will all put oil on their head before they would fast or the days that they fast. So, yes, you, you can do that. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I think it'll help you. I think it'll remind you. <laughs> all right. Yes, sir, you had a question? Fasting, do you have to, like, what if you fasted from abstaining from eating meats and, like, little Debbie's, if that's what you like? That's, now, that's a diet, brother. <laughs> that's a diet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to lay off them Debbie's, brother. <laughs> 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 no, sir, you got to turn, turn that plate down, brother. You're so eating them Debbie's and stuff. That, that's just a diet. That's a diet plan. So, yeah. like. So, like, what, what if, like, you're trying to build a fasting life, but thank you, the thought of not eating all day just, like, hurts you? Like, it, that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what, what it's doing is, 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 is killing you. I know it's hard, son. Just, you just got to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she got a question here. Give her that mic. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to, it, it's, it's supposed to hurt. See, the life that we're living is supposed to kill us. Remember, the Bible says, be ye therefore followers of Christ. So now, if I'm following him, what did he do? He died. So now, my journey is to pick up my cross. So while I'm living this life, I'm picking up my cross. And I, Paul said he died how often? Daily. 
So every opportunity hey, was that he, every opportunity he said, okay, I'm going I'm to cut this out because that, that fulfills my desire. And if we can get more folks that cut out a lot of their desires to get closer with God, we'll see a different type of church. You see, you see how that worship we had in here just a second ago? We'll see that more often. Because now people are longing for an exp a, a spiritual experience. I want to get back. I, I, I want to get back to that place because when you start fasting, you start killing this, and so your spirit man start feeling good, and you want more of that. So you want more. You, you know what? Instead of going down to the Popeyes, I'm going to go to the altar and pray. That that it it, cha it changes your mindset. So now you want to do more spiritual things than natural and carnal things because natural and carnal things build you up instead of building your spirit man you follow what i'm saying yes ma'am so you you ever heard of the daniel fast like is that so is that a real thing then yeah something somebody made up but <laughs> okay yeah so we i mean we buy you talking about when they're eating grapes and stuff like that or something yeah uh, fruits and vegetables when daniel had did it all right for the um for the king yeah, oh, well, you're talking about that. Well, when, <laughs> let's go to, uh, go down there to the book of Daniel real quick. I guess the, re the reason why I asked uh, or brought it up is because, so basically a fast, the correct fast is no food at all and no drink at all. Right. Well, we had you had some fast where people didn't eat, consume, or drink anything. But then you had fast where people were just on water. If I was that. Now, if you wanna, and uh, if you desire to eat grapes or something like that, or during your fast or something like that, or cut from Debbie cakes, I don't know how far that's gonna go. I don't know where you're gonna be at in the spirit. But I, th I think that the more I kill myself, I'll get more or, or to a spiritual faith, spiritual place quicker. You follow what I'm saying? Versus, okay, well I'm just going, you know. Uh, let, let, let me try to eat this just to satisfy my hunger or satisfy my desire. Because I tell you something, if you ain't thinking about it, you'll be all right. If you come to this church and you come here and say you're going to shut in for a day and pray all night and study, I guarantee you when you're reading, it'll feel like you're eating. It happened to me. And, and you won't even you won't even you won't even be thinking about food because you have a different drive. You know what I'm saying? Just prime example: you could just eat, but then you start smelling something that smells good. What happens? Your desire changes. You already full. You done just ate, and now you're talking about man. I'm not just that cake smells good. Let me get a slice of cake. But you just ate. It's because your desire based upon where you at. And what your uh, 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 what, what your spirit wants during that time, or that, or that what you want during that specific time. So a lot of times, you know, I, I think it's good to be. If you're going fast, you need to be somewhere where there ain't no you know food places. Ain't, you can't smell nothing. They come down here and pour some oil down there. Oh, you smell this type of oil. You won't smell no. <laughs> <laughs> you just smell this virgin oil and and and, and, give them, and I'm, I'm telling you, it'll be it, it can be easy. I don't say easy, but it'll be easier. Right, and it, it is. It depends on your desire. What do you really want? Because some people are willing to do it just to get. I mean, feel a hunger pain, just to get closer to God. It's just a little, just a, that little bit. Watch this. When you got people that work out, there are certain workouts that put you through pain. But when you want to see results, you continue to do it until you get the results that you want. But we do all of that stuff for our natural. So we'll work out. We'll do our squats. We'll do our push-ups. We'll do our bench presses. All those different things. And we'll hurt. I ain't been in the gym in three months, man. I went to that gym last night, man. Felt like I tore my whole arm out. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, man. I said, I got to get back into my rotation. But it depends on how bad a person wants something. You done been in court before and ain't had no breakfast and they taking all day, and you you, you, don't want, you ain't gonna leave either because you don't want them to miss your name. You done got that ticket and they gonna, and you mess around and be out here in Bullock County. They be like, bench warrant. And get out there, <laughs> 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 have your bench warrant out there because you ain't sit through that court session. But you would do that because you don't want to uh, 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 miss your opportunity to you know whatever with your citation. 
But where are we at when it comes down to our drive for the Lord? Amen. Everybody understand that? All right. Now, let me give you this. I got to get y'all out of here. Yeah, all right. All right. I got a few minutes. All right. Go to the book of uh, Mark. Chapter 1 and 23. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. So listen. <laughs> <laughs> So Jesus is preaching. So there is a manifestation that occurs while a person is preaching. There is a word that can be preached where demons don't like. So Jesus is now preaching, and in the middle of him preaching, the devil and this person yell out and say, leave us alone. <laughs> now, if anybody ever do that in here, y'all know what's going on in <laughs> She said, leave us alone. Read that again, huh? There was in their synagogue. Wait, go up, go up to uh, uh, 20, uh, 21. And they went into Capernaum and straight, uh, straightway on the Sabbath day entered into the synagogue and taught. Uh -huh. and, and they were. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Uh -huh. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribe. So now he's, Jesus is preaching with authority. He's preaching with power. And then this spirit just started yelling out. See, demons don't. See, let me show you this. When the devil is in you, what does the word do for you? What does the word do? Right. It cleans you. So now you got a demon that's in you. So now if the devil is in you and you get in the word, the word trying to clean you, what do you think? Clean you, what the devil going to do? He's going to start getting uncomfortable. So now, and this is why I just challenge yourself. So what do y'all, y'all start hearing a preach word and you start to say, man, I wish this man shut up. And, and you start hearing all that stuff. You might, you might even come out the service and say, Pastor, while you was up there preaching, it was something to me to say, tell that man to shut up. Go get the microphone from him. Are you getting on my nerves? If that ever happened, I need to see you after service. I need to. We need to have a, we need, we need to come on up here. We need to have a prayer meet. <laughs> because, you know, devils can't, they, they can't handle the word. They can't handle no preach word. All right, y'all with me? All right, read, uh-huh. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Uh -huh. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Hold your peace and come out. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with him a, with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority command, commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And see, I'm going to tell you all something, because this doesn't happen in churches on the regular or on the normal. When somebody get a demon and somebody pray for them, people be like, oh, I don't need to go to that church because that don't seem right. And because they ain't never read their Bible. Devil's supposed to manifest in church. You should see demons manifesting in churches. That's the stuff you're supposed to see. Just like you see healing take place in church. Demons are supposed to manifest. Somebody got a devil in them, they need to be cast out. It's supposed to happen in church. People are like, oh, no. That church there, man, this lady was squirming on the floor. And hey, why that man, that man keep preaching about devils and demons? Because you need to be educated. <laughs> it's amazing how people go to church and don't have no education on the Bible. Go to the church on a Sunday morning and preach up there, oh, oh, oh. And then you say, well, what did he say after the service? Oh, oh. <laughs> and instead of saying, oh, you'd be like, uh, 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 you don't know because you're not getting any education. You need to come in and get educated so know what, you know what, 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 what people are dealing with and know if you're dealing with something. Because a lot of people got the devil in them and they don't even know that it's the devil. They just know that something's wrong. All right, let me stop because some of y'all start flipping it. All right, go to Mark. <laughs> Mark chapter 16. Mark 16 to 17. All right, read. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Uh -huh. 
They shall speak with new tongues. So there is, you know, demons, they have trouble with the name of Jesus because they understand the power that that name carries. It's so powerful, you know, just, just by saying the name Jesus, it just makes them squiggle a little bit. They start squirming. They don't know what to do because it feels like the, uh, 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 the, the, the heat's being turned up on them. That's why, that God, that's why every time them demons used to come, uh, when they came, they start getting nervous and doing all fidget stuff. I remember one time I was in here preaching, and there was a girl sitting out on this side over here. She started squirming and hissing like a snake. I said, hey, listen. You're going to be quiet while I'm preaching. We're going to cast the devil out of you when service over, but you be quiet while I'm preaching in the name of Jesus. And I said that to her. She was quiet until, the, until that night service, and then she got up, and it was, it, I thought, uh, what's that character name to have the white hair on X-Men? What's that? She used to do all that. Storm. We had Storm in the building. <laughs> Storm. Storm was my <laughs> The lights, I thought the lights were starting to start flickering. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, demons, when you're preaching with such power and you, you, you're speaking with the name of Jesus and you operate in authority, see, a lot of times devils recognize the fear in people. They recognize the fear. This is why the Bible said God has not given you what? The see, fear is a spirit. And it grips a lot of people. So when people see demons manifest, it, nobody in the church need to be scared. Why would a church folk be scared of a devil that's in somebody? That's just the devil. You got, if you got God in you, you got the strong, you got the strongest power that could be in anybody. Somebody got the devil in everybody nervous and shaking. No, pray, pray that the devil get out of them. Pray that that that, that whoever is is working with them that it casts the devil out of them. Amen. So you got that with the word. Now I want to do with this, and I'm gonna close. Go to First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. All right, 16 and 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Mm -hmm. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Uh -huh. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is cun a cunning player on the heart. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. This is the importance of the music department because music, just like music can play spirits out, they can play spirits in. And I'm going to deal with that later about this music, but... I want to talk about how important music in the church is when it's in it. Listen to how he said, I want you to bring me somebody that can play well. Because now when they're playing, it can help with the spirits that's in me to exit. And a lot of people get, that's why a lot of time when music is playing, people can be, get delivered from whatever they got going on. You'll see people, all this stuff leaking out of them, all this stuff while the music is going on. They, they're getting delivered from some of the stuff that's been holding, down, holding them down. So music, I mean, I'm telling you something. Music is very critical in church. Very critical. That's why it's important. Musicians need to be in prayer. Praise leaders need to be in prayer. Everything dealing with everything over there, everybody need to be in prayer. I don't care if you the, the bongo player. You need to be in prayer. <laughs> I'm serious. Everybody, everybody needs to be in prayer because that. just think about how much, think about, how much influence and how much God's presence come in by the way of music. Now watch this. We were having such a worship going on that it invoked a praise. And as soon as the transition was happening, guess what happened? Music started cutting up. Keyboard go out of nowhere. Now, no, everything, was, everything was fine until, you know, see, you know, worship, when worship happens, it builds and it, and it carries and it calls. See, the Bible talks about how praise calls pres uh, God's presence to come. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. And a lot of times when you're in that worship, it's a lot of stuff exiting. And then so now when I'm praising, now I can get my refill. 
And so that was the transition that was going on. But now the devil, see, the, the devil operate in, 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 in music. He operated music. Get, get the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. And I don't care what nobody says. You got to be careful what kind of music, music you listen to or you had a devil in you. Yes, sir. I don't care what people say. They can say, oh, that, you know, that's all right. And, you know, you can listen to this. And, all right. Go and listen to it. <laughs> Spirits get a hold of you. You don't know what's going on with you because that music plays something in you. You know, see, see, your soul is like a recorder. It's like a record player, you know. Just think about it. A lot of stuff come inside of you, uh, whether it's music or any words, anything. That thing just start playing in you. You ain't even got to be thinking about it. It just start playing because you're like a recorder. That's why you got to be careful what you're depositing in your spirit. All right, read, huh? Son of man, take up the lamentation unto the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Thou sealest up the psalm full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Uh -huh. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou right, art so, the so, so when, when Satan was created, he was created an instrument. And so when he got kicked out of his pl place of being an uh, angel that covered, he never lost his position in music. He never lost his ability of music. He just changed the realm. This is why when we look at the Bible, if you ever see the lineage of, of uh, Adam and then you see Cain's lineage, you'll see that Cain, everything that Cain had, it dealt with building and music. Everything. Let, go, let me show you. And then, uh, then we're going to get, get back to it. All right, go to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, and start at 19. And Lamech took unto him two wives, the name of one uh, was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. You got it? And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwelt in tents, and of such that had cattle. And his brother's name, name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain. So you got brass, harp, the organ, all these different things. These are music. And this was, this was birth. This is the first time you hear about music in the Bible is on the side of Cain. Now we hear about uh, uh, Adam on Adam's side. Uh, and when you got Seth over there, uh, all they talk about is people being born. And then talk about somebody walking with God. So it talks about birth. While uh, 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 Cain's side dealing with music and building, all you see on uh, Seth and Adam's side is dealing with birth, kingdom. All right? So now, uh, uh, now go back to uh, 1 Samuel, and I promise I'm going to let y'all go. So now, there was a, the time where, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. Um, there was a time where, uh, go to 18th chapter of Samuel, 1 Samuel 18, and start at verse number 5. And David went up whithersoever Saul sent uh, him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul uh -huh. set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities of Israel Singing and dancing. Watch this. They're singing and dancing. Uh huh. To meet King Saul with tabrets. Uh huh. With joy and with instruments of music. So now music is playing. Watch this. Read. Uh huh. And the women answered one another as they played and said, "Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands." This is a song that they're saying. Saul he slayed. His thousand and David his ten thousand. This is the music that they're playing and saying this back and forth, right? Read, uh huh. And Saul was very wroth. Saul was wroth. And the saying displeased him. Uh huh. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed but thousand. Uh huh. 
And what can he have more but the kingdom? Uh-huh. And Saul eyed David for that day and forward. Uh-huh. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God. Uh, evil spirit came unto Saul by the way of music. A sound going on, a song going on, they, whatever they're saying. And with this music, it caused a spirit to enter into Saul. Read, uh-huh. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. Uh-huh. And David played with his hand uh -huh. as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Uh -huh. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. Uh -huh. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him. So Amen. Saul had a javelin, which almost synonymous to like a knife or like a, a, a long knife or sword or whatever you call it, want to call it. He's wanting to kill David. Every time he want to kill David, when David start playing the music, it, it took his hand, make his hand shake. So he really couldn't get him because of the music and because of the praise. Uh -huh. So then we, then we learn how to praise God the right way. The devil, he trying to focus in and try to hit you. He trying to, he said, oh, I got him, I got him. And then Seth cut a little step. He said, oh, hold on, I, got, I can't, I can't, I can't hit him, I can't tell. He said, oh, Vontae, I'm coming to get Vontae. Vontae start praising God. Oh, now my hand is shaking. So now when we understand how much praise has to do with helping people, and that, that music has a lot to do with entrance and exit. So now we got to be, be careful of what music we're allowing to enter and make sure that we got the right music to help whatever's in us to exit. That's the importance. And, and I'm going to deal with some more of these ne next week, but we got to remember that when it comes down to these spirits, I don't care. You know, see, people will tell you that a lot of things is all right for a person to be saved to do. And I'm just be honest. I'm going to be honest preacher. Everything ain't all right. Everything's not all right. You got some, I'm telling you something. Some of these people that, some of this music out today, a lot of these folk, they pray over these music and, and, you know, not praying to the Lord Jesus, but they're praying to the little G God to take the minds of people. Think about a lot of people that, that do a lot of murdering, killing, all these different things like that. Uh, gang banging, all that stuff, gang gang violence, all that stuff. A lot of that's in music. All right, y'all ain't saying nothing. It's the truth. A lot of that music produces, and and you know these folk, and they got it, they got it bad. All type, all genres of music that you know. Some of this, uh, even like that, you know, heavy metal stuff. Mike, Mike, know what I'm talking about? That heavy metal, that that stuff, <laughs> and heavy and shooting up schools and stuff. You gotta be careful now. That stuff, because, and, and, and listen, let me explain this. I'm going to let y'all go, I promise. Even games, and I know y'all don't want to hear this. Even games. And why these little kids be running to schools and shooting? You know why? Because they're on the game doing it. Think about it. People get excited about killing people. They say, oh, yeah, I got him. I killed him. Yeah, killed him. Oh, I got him. And then you stand over, you you on a game and stand over somebody and just keep busting them in the head, head splattering, and the, the graphics on this stuff nowadays just look as gruesome, you know, and you just doing all that and you get excited about it. That stuff will get in your spirit and somebody cut you off on the road and you got a gun, you, you go straight to it. Why y'all ladies, y'all know I'm telling the truth. All right. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know, y'all don't need no guns. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty and what's our, what's the Luke, what's the games y'all play? Call of Duty might be out of date. What's the games y'all play with all the guns? Oh, it's still in there. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. See, Grand Theft, look at that. Grand Theft Auto. When I was a child, this woman right here, I was like, I think I was probably about thirteen when the first Grand Theft Auto. I was young. She said, "It's a eighteen and older. You ain't getting that, boy." <laughs> But guess what? <laughs> guess what? When I did get a little older, and I saw that game, and I had relatives that played that game, guess what? A lot of stuff that was in that game, they started mimicking the behaviors. 
Y'all don't want to, listen, I, I can attest, I, done, I saw it. I saw it happen. I'm coming to you. A lot of that stuff, we, we play it in the game. That stuff get in your portal, get in your heart, get in your spirit, and then after a while, it can create something, so much rage or whatever in you. Somebody cut you off and do something to you. That's how a lot of people that, that, that does a, a, a second-degree murder. A lot of second-degree murder and all that stuff come from folks, you know, man, I, I didn't mean to kill him. I just killed him. I didn't mean to choke her to death. I just choked her to death. I didn't mean to hit him that hard. Think about this box and all, you know, all, you know, there's a lot of games, USC games, all that stuff. Then you want to practice on people, do all that stuff, you know, hurt somebody. <laughs> we used to have, uh, it was a game when I was young, it was called Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Y'all probably know about that, because, uh, yeah, we, <laughs> nah, it was, it was an old, old, it was a real old game. It was on uh, uh, Nintendo uh, 64, and then uh, it was on, uh, 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 I don't know, if it wasn't the first PlayStation. What was that one uh, that you, it was the other game. I think it was a cube. You had a little, the little thing on there, uh, the little box on the controller. Yeah. So we used to watch that, and and we they be on there doing all that. Let's get ready to rumble, doing all that, fighting and stuff. And guess what? We soon, soon me and my brother get done playing, and we get we get upset with each other. Guess what happened? <laughs> it was in our spirit. <laughs> That's how much that stuff. And I'm telling you, man, that stuff is in you. And then we get in trouble because we fight. We're doing all this stuff because it was what we was looking at. It was what we was viewing. So you got to be careful of the things that you're viewing. Yes, sir. I was going to say, I, I believe that's true because I played a lot of ni games called Need for Speed. When yeah, I grow up, when I grow up. Yeah. <laughs> and Need for Speed to have you, <laughs> have you with a bunch of points on your license. And Need for License. It'd be <laughs> need for Speed, Need the License. Yes, sir. I, I, w I actually did lose my license when I was 17 for a lane drag ticket. Yeah, see? see y'all see? So now, now y'all see that what I'm saying. I ain't just making up nothing. I'm telling the truth. All right? Any questions tonight? Anybody need any understanding on this? Or anybody, a Bible questions, anything like that tonight? Everybody understand what we spoke about tonight? All right, let's stand and give the Lord a hand praise tonight.